Black Sister. My name is Andrea Haynes, founder and president of Virtuous Women ASAP, where our mission is to teach females of all ages their worth as found in Jesus Christ and how to build on that rock solid foundation. Hallelujah. Well, we're back. And if you need to know what tools you need to use while you are interacting with us today, feel free to tune into our video called Virtuous Tools. Uh, that's again, Virtuous Tools. All right, once you've looked at that, then come back and join me. All right, I'm glad that you've been able to take a look at that. So I know you know what tools you need. And so we are going to jump right into Proverbs 31 verse 15 today, but not before we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to lead this session. Break strongholds, deliver wisdom, and deliver life-changing revelation. Dear God, I ask you to awaken this warrior and recreate her into a woman who will transform her home and teach others for your glory. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Okay, well, let's jump right in. Uh, I was led to use the KJ21 version of verse 15 in Proverbs 31. Uh, and so it reads this way. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Okay, ladies, there is a lot of liberation in this one. How many of you were taught to live out the quote, a man may work from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done? Well, did you know that this quote was coined during the American Revolution? This time period was actually marked by the strive towards freedom. No more double taxation, African-Americans striving for emancipation, tarring and feathering of the royal officials of the British monarch, et cetera, et cetera. So how ironic that this quote is actually steeped in bondage for a woman. And get this, it's usually told to a woman by a woman that she respects. Therefore, you begin to accept it as fact and you tell yourself, well, if I'm awake, then my work is not done because it's never done. And, and if I'm a woman worth my salt, well, I should always be busy. <laughs> well, ladies, God has the original Emancipation Proclamation in this verse just for you. All right, well, today's definitions come from Webster Online and a commentary. I like the commentary one so much, I'm, I'm gonna have to save this one for last. This one is good, y'all. So we're gonna zero in on these words from the dictionary. Riseth, and again, that is the old English form of the word rises, night and maidens. Then we'll end up with the meat from the commentary. All right, so again, old English style riseth, but we're looking at the definition in the common English verbiage of rises. The two definitions of the Merriam-Webster online that drew me in were to get up from sleep or from one's bed, and then the act of advancing to a higher level or position. As per our usual, we're gonna come back to all the definitions after we list each one. So let's look at word number two, which is night. This definition that the Lord led me to was the time from dusk to dawn when no sunlight is visible. Word number three, maidens. Definition that drew me in this time, coming before all others, first or earliest. And now for the definition of meat from the pulpit commentary. And giveth meat to her household. Now I don't speak Latin, so bear with me. Dedit que pradem domesticus sui. The word for meat is tariff, which means food torn in pieces with the teeth and hence food to be eaten. Uh, when you get a, a moment after this broadcast, or you can pause it right now and check it out, Psalms 111 verse 5. Well, the Bible tells us in John 8, 32, in God's word translation, you will know the truth 
and the truth will set you free. Oh, praise the Lord. God reveals his compassion to us here, ladies. So let's get some lessons. Part one. Our woman here is rising from her sleep. Hallelujah. She is coming from sleep, which means she was sleeping. God does not require you to be an ever moving machine, dear woman of God. He is calling you to take your rind to bed and rest. Temperance in all things, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Then you are equipped to handle what he actually does require of you. So after the virtuous woman gets her rest, God then calls her to advance to a higher level. How do we do that? Spending time in prayer, seeking his face for guidance, strength, wisdom, direction, and revelation. Hmm. We're going to get back to revelation in more detail shortly. All right. Lessons part two. God calls the virtuous woman to advance in a higher level in direct proportion to something after she has sufficiently rested. When I read the definition for night, the Holy Spirit plainly illuminated to me, this is the time the sun's light, S-O-N, is not visible. The virtuous woman will rise early to seek God when the sun's light, S-U-N, is not visible or early, but she will also be found there when trials are pressed sorely about her or those she is commissioned to when they cannot clearly sense God's movement or presence. The sun's light, S-O-N, is not visible. She will instinctively and diligently be found here more often during those times, realizing that more power is needed. Therefore, more power should be gathered from the source. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Let's keep on going with the lessons. Here's part three. The virtuous woman rests, rises, and gathers for her maidens. Remember that definition is coming before all others first or earliest. Ladies, there are those God places in your immediate circle first. That is the people in your immediate household, those who actually live in the same house with you. Then there are those whom God will place on your mind when you're seeking him early that morning. Then there will be those who physically present themselves to you that day before any other human being, first or earliest. That's why you're seeking rest, rising, and gathering for these maidens. You are required to seek God on their behalf in your real work as a virtuous woman. God showed me there are things in their lives that you're seeking him on their behalf will move, but only from you doing so. Does that seem strange? Does that seem like too much responsibility? Well, how about if we consider the fact that in every truly successful company, there are people assigned to each task based on if it is a wisely led company, their ability. God created women and then placed within us the ability to reproduce. Our faithfulness, virtuous women, in prayer will reproduce our requests into their lives. Now I'm speaking as a woman who has seen God do this in the lives of my own family. I challenge you, I encourage you, virtuous woman of God, to put God to the test. And then please share with us your answered prayers of reproduction life givers. Oh yes, because your prayers will be answered. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue with the lessons. Part four, the virtuous woman rests, rises and gathers for her maidens, but what is she gathering? Meat. Aha. And here we find revelation. The meat or tariff is small bits that can be eaten. In order to be digestible, food or meat must be in a form that is able to be utilized by the body. That's by definition. How about that? 
But what is the body in the word of God? God's people. Mm. See, when you, as that virtuous woman, seek God early, after you get your rest, God will show you how his truths must be disseminated to your household and other maidens that day. Wow. God has already made a way for the day of every virtuous woman to be full of spiritual success. Rest. Let me say that again. Rest. Seek him early on behalf of your maidens and he will use you to reproduce himself fully, perfectly in the lives of those you touch. Hallelujah. Well, we're so glad that you were able to make it to stop in with us today and share some time in the word of God with us. Please subscribe, encourage others to do so, so that you and they will not miss one thing that God has to give to you through us. Be blessed.